Two, three, four, the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Sometimes you go over the top rope and you bang your head on the ring apron. Don't do that. That's when you feel like a big dope. Because they're the worst bumps you can be taking. Oh, it's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Sometimes you reach out for the hot tag. But then you go ahead and make your own comeback. Knock it off. That's when you should quit wrestling. And you're better off rolling in thumbtacks. Hey, W. The hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Now double claps. Let's go, Bob Squad. I can't hear you in Europe. It's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. ba da ba da Whoa! Yay! What it is is what it is. What I am is what I am. We are saying stuff, doing things, jumping off the walls, bouncing off the ceiling. We got the rumors of Skinny, the scuttlebutt, the deep dish, getting hoodwinked, flim flam, shim shammed, and bamboozled. It, the cat is out of the bag. The train has left the station. No water in the pool. Went to the well one too many times. We are punching the clock, passing a buck, working hard, but hardly working. A one trick pony beating a dead horse, hogging the covers, staining the sheets, saving trees, hugging whales, kissing hands. Hands and shaking babies at this Hulu edition of Monday Night Raw episode on the hardest part of the ring. This episode took place on August 16th of 2021. I'm only showing I can hold my dates together because The Miz at one point said in five days at WrestleMania, and that is incorrect because WrestleMania is far away. And uh, there were some other guffaws, some some faux pas on, on this bad boy as well, this Mamma Jamma, this Vince and Gambini. It was off the hook, off the wall, off the chain, under the table, under weather, under the radar in San Antonio, Texas, where the governor has COVID. Eh, didn't need to mention that, but it did. Mm. <coughs> that is good water. All right, you wild animals. Let's, uh, I, I can't think of various business... Let's let's start with the show. We'll do the show and we'll do some chatting afterwards. How about that? What is that good? Not limited enough commercial interruption. There is a nationwide is on your side song as some lady singing uh, something something about being alone. Now she's a part of your home. And you see a woman with a new dog like she adopted the dog and there's a dad walking his daughter down the aisle at a wedding. Um, it's just commercial. They show a lot. Because it used to be the the country singer and the old football player were nationwide going nationwide. It's a it's his insurance if you're not in the states. <clears throat> Didn't need to tell you all that, but I just want you to know that in between every break, there's usually one commercial on Hulu that airs between every break for a year at a time. And right now it's this one. Excuse me, <clears throat> I need more water. I was sucking down some tortilla chips with some mild salsa. I'm not a crazy man. All right, I'm not embarrassed. Don't salsa shame me. Sometimes I like it mild. Just, just want to get a little crazy, but not too bad. I love me a good mild. <laughs> Speaking of mild, what a go home show for Raw. <laughs> we have a video. We see Randy Orton's package, and then Randy Orton shows up to talk, and his eyebrows busted open. Probably because he's on house shows with Omos. I don't know that I made that up. Uh, Riddle interrupts him, and he still wants to be his friend despite taking his finisher. And he wants to be team of RK Bro and AJ and Oa. And everyone cheers for the RK Bro. They all want to see it. AJ Styles and Omos interrupt, and AJ does not like these guys very much and likes it when uh, one of them beats up the other one. So we set these matches up. So I guess it's going to be Riddle versus AJ later on, and Orton versus Omos. Uh, Battle of the O's. Uh, later on in the evening. Um, nothing really happened here. There was a lot of talk. It was just setting up two singles matches is all it really was. I think it was this, as at this point, it's been apparent for months they're going to do this tag match at SummerSlam. So what can you do here? Uh, is, 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 oh yeah, Orton walked away from Riddle and Riddle was very disappointed and everyone was sad. And the question was, will Orton be in the corner of Matt Riddle? And the answer was no, he was not. So Jimmy Smith during the match, oh, we take a break. I'm sorry, guys. I'm all over the place, man. You can't stop me. I'm bouncing off the walls. I'm jumping off the ceiling, pissing, uh, pissing vinegar, ants in the pants, thunder from down under daddy all the way live, baby doll. Making your body shake and your liver quiver. 
Uh, we take a break. We're in a match. It's Riddle and AJ and Jimmy Smith, the new announcer from UFC, uh, who's probably getting fired before the year is up because his pronouns are all over the place. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I there's a thing where Vince McMahon really hates pronouns. It's it's pretty well known at this point. He doesn't want you saying him or her or she or he, like oh he hit her with the she hit her with that move and. He, he hid that secret from him. Uh, he likes, you know, uh, say the names as much as possible. He wouldn't say, oh, Riddle hit him with the move. Riddle hit, hit AJ Styles with the move. And that kind of thing. But sometimes it gets a little convoluted. Like, Riddle does not want people to steal Riddle's scooter. Well, no, you've already established the, the, the subject of the sentence, so the object would just... The scooter and a pronoun refers back to the subject. No? Okay. I spent too much time on that. I apologize. But anyway, Jimmy Smith said regarding Riddle, Can't question his offense. It's always high-flying. No, it's not. I'll do one high-flying thing here or there. He has his twisty bro thingies. But uh, he actually does very little high-flying. Uh, but when he does, it's a spectacular thing. So I, I don't know. That way, I thought that was incorrect. AJ Styles wins the thing. There was some kind of distraction from Omos. I was distracted by my fish tacos, so I didn't see what Omos did. He probably pulled a leg or something. I don't know. He's tall. Who cares? AJ wins the thing, and they beat up Riddle, and then Orton is nowhere to be found. But then Nikki A.S.H. talks to a blonde lady and tells the blonde lady the same promo. When I wear this outfit, I'm almost a superhero. And uh, Riddle is in the back, and he tells the blonde lady that he was... Uh, Maybe it's the Irish guy. I wonder who he told. I'm going to go back and look it up. No, I'm not. I'm totally not going to do that. Riddle told one of the announcer people he was really sad, and he made a sad puppy dog face, and everyone went, aw. <laughs> you can't not like the guy. And Nikki A.S.H. wrestles Rhea. I'm going to stop for a second because I'm blown through this pretty fast. Oh, this whole episode was... I mean, it's if, if it's not a deliberate, literal rematch after rematch, it was just, hey, let's have uh, every single combination of these people fight before we do the actual match. And I understand with a three-way why you would build a three-way like that, so I really sh maybe I shouldn't have stopped here to pick on this. But, um, but yeah, we've had Nikki Charlotte, we've had Charlotte Rhea plenty of times, and then Nikki Rhea. And in each one of these singles matches, we had we had two Nikki Charlottes. There was like a regular and a no rules thing. During every one of these singles matches, the one who's not involved has to get involved. In this case, it was, uh, I think this was the second Nikki Rhea one, because didn't Charlotte interfere with one and bounce somebody off the top rope or something like that? I forget. And they would have tumbled to the side and hit the ring apron, which is the hardest part of the ring. Anyway, Nikki and Rhea are going back and forth. I mean, you got two baby faces, and that's... You got two baby faces of different size and stature, so... And attitudes at the moment. Because three years ago, Nikki was more like Rhea than Rhea is now, um, as far as that harder edge and everything else. But, yeah, this was so odd. Because the crowd didn't really know what to do. Because Nikki always has to be an underdog baby face. She's basically Mighty Mouse. We've heard for years, Vince loves Mighty Mouse. He loves... Underdog, goofy superhero in a cape. Plucky. He likes plucky. And Nikki does that very well. But it's so hard for Rhea to work this match as a babyface and not just look like a bully. But she still has to take the heel role, meaning not turn heel and act like a bad guy, but deliver the most punishment and offense and deliver that heat so Nikki could come back, make a comeback. So it doesn't... It just doesn't do anyone any favors, but it was like, well, you have to do it, though, because then it's then it's just going to look like a handicap match. Uh, oh, excuse me, differently disabled adults match at SummerSlam, right? So I don't know. I don't know about that. The whole thing is odd to me. Um, that was my original point. Yeah, so it was hard. Charlotte was on commentary, and Charlotte was good. So Charlotte on commentary... Uh, this is the second week in a row she's done this. <laughs> she explained all of the faults in Nikki's almost, the almost part of her gimmick. 
Like, why would you even say that? Why would you be almost anything? I know who I am. I'm the queen, yada, 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 yada. But, yeah, she basically, just like she poked holes in the way the entire money in a bank concept and why would a good guy even win it, the traditional money in a bank concept way, which is cash in on a dying champion. Yeah, Charlotte poked holes in this too. So Charlotte is just telling us all the reasons to not get behind Nikki uh, A.S.H. It's, you know, we've always heard the old adage... Like, hey, the heels should always talk as though they believe they're right. They should never know that they did wrong. The heels should believe they are right. In this case, not only does the heel believe she is right, her, her argument is so good that the audience goes, yeah, she's totally right. Anyway, Rhea wins clean over Nikki, which, you know, traditional uh, storytelling. And, and this program says Nikki keeps that thing at SummerSlam. But uh, I guess she would need it the most of the three of them, honestly. But it doesn't really... I think Rhea needs something to do. Uh, I think Rhea to smack. My opinion is Rhea and Drew to SmackDown because uh, I know September October ish is the draft season. Whatever the draft that isn't a draft. They just trade, but they call it a draft. Who cares? Okay. So, oh, but this is interesting. So this is the best reaction Nikki got for the whole thing. She's frustrated. She sees Charlotte mocking her, and she attacks Charlotte and just beats the crap out of Charlotte. Throws in a ring, and Charlotte runs into a clothesline by Rhea. But Nikki's sudden loss of temper, and okay, I know I'm a cheesy cornball, but I'm not going to let you call me a cheesy cornball. I'll call myself a cheesy cornball when I want to. To show Nikki's not a doormat. That's what, and I was so surprised, but pleasantly surprised to see this. That they said, okay, we've got this underdog. That is, that yes, this underdog just lost, but how can you at least respect her character, even if she is clearly the underdog versus everyone she wrestles? And the answer is, well, have her have her not take shit from Charlotte. And people reacted really well, and I think it was against their will almost. Um, so really well done, and, and pleasantly surprised. It, it opened my eyes a little bit. Made me look up for my fish tacos. But then I'm looking back down on my tacos, because A, they're good tacos, and B, Jinder Mahal and his two buddies are backstage... And then we see Lashley and has a colossal package along with uh, Goldberg as a peg package as well. MVP is talking to an Irish guy and MVP is like, you're Irish. And the Irish guy is like, yep, that's not what they said at all. That's completely false. Jinder Mahal and is, is, is a tag team, is a handy, is another handicap, is a differently able adults match. Drew has fought more cronies and handicap matches than anyone I can think of. You know, all of his feuds. Or maybe it just seemed like he was wrestling Shelton and Cedric in some form all the time. For a while. It feels like he was always wrestling a bunch of guys. And anyway. Drew wins. He pins one of the big guys with the Claymore. Claymore threatens him with a sword and tells Jinder at SummerSlam he's going to cut his, his dick off. I don't know. Anyway. I'm going to lean back here. Hope you can still hear me. I'm going to kick the thing. Uh, let me think here. So this is interesting. We do Moist TV. John Morrison or Johnny Drip Drip instead of Ms. TV. He has this whole obsessed with water and hydration and somewhat disgusting gimmick. So he, uh, he does Moist TV. And he's very good. He's got his water puns, etc., etc. Uh, this is where Ms. called SummerSlam WrestleMania. Again, he made an error. I know I'm picking on him, but whatever. I felt like it. Damien, Pri oh, Damien Priest comes out, and uh, again, I don't know why his, why how is he a babyface when his character is just bullying and starting shit with people? Like, it doesn't it just doesn't connect? Like, what what was it about Priest that used to connect with me that doesn't anymore? I don't know. It's I just I just I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it's it's like there's another case of NXT knew how to present this guy and make him feel like a big deal. But now Priest is Priest is acting like every other baby face. And I think that's what hurts it for me. They're all the same. Whenever Seamus is a baby face, he does the same thing. Whenever Orton was, it's been a while, and but whenever Orton was full, like 100% babyface, he does the same thing. And Drew, basically, a priest is acting like another Drew. And Drew is acting like they made Sheamus, and like they had made Roman 
uh, act for years. And, like they made Sina act for years before that. So I guess that's it. I need to talk it out. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening, Bob Squad. I need to talk out what is Priest is not special anymore. He talks like the rest of them. I don't care what he does with his hair. He shoves Miz into a pool. So so Morrison accuses uh, Miz of, you know, he basically grills him on, why did you lie to me? Why did you fake this in injury? It's one thing to fake an injury and lie to everyone else. Why did you lie to me? Uh, which is Which is interesting and makes perfect sense. It makes sense to me that why wouldn't Morrison be offended? He should be in this case. So so the seeds are more than planted for the, the Morrison turn because people were cheering for Morrison and Morrison just volunteers Miz to wrestle Priest right there and there is a break and Priest does wrestle the Miz and I, I forget, I think this Priest beat him? I think Priest just beats him. He must have beat him. Was there a DQ? I don't know. No, it couldn't have been. Seamus did commentary for some reason. It was another night of this. Does everyone do the commentary deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny Drip Drip leaves the Miz hanging. So I'm sure Priest beat him with his finisher or whatever. I didn't give the stars out today. I'm a little distracted, folks. I apologize. But I'm sure it was a 714 star match. You can just tell by the sound, by the audio. Please don't question the system. I don't have time to explain how that works. Nikki and Rhea got a 401 star match, still pretty good. And um, AJ versus Riddle, I, I really enjoyed it. I give, I give it negative 33,000 stars. I really enjoyed that match. AJ, so what happened? We're backstage. Anyway, Sheamus and Damian go back and forth. Hey, why don't we wrestle at SummerSlam too? Okay, there you go. Orson and Miz are backstage and they settle their differences. Uh, which is odd for Miz just to be like, ah, well, I'm sorry. Is it over now? And Morrison goes, yeah, well, okay. And the New Day are in the back just holding up signs. I don't know if they were on other segments, but this is the only Hulu thing they made. That's the that's the only time I've seen them on the Hulu Raw since SummerSlam. They're not damn it. See? God damn it, Miz. You got me screwed. Since Money in the Bank is the last time I've seen anyone on, from New Day on TV. I know he's on SmackDown, but I don't watch SmackDown, unfortunately. Occasional clips. Anyway, a blonde lady talks to AJ and Omos about their upcoming Omos versus Orton match. And we do the Omos match and Orton. Um, it's what it was. I mean, Orton did what he did. Like, he sold the strength of Omos early on. He took a, a body slam and sold the one slam for a long, long time. And he got Orton, pronouns pal. He got Orton got tossed around. But this is pretty much what I expected. There was a DQ finish. AJ just flat out got caught kicking Orton in a ribs on the outside. Uh, Orton got smashed into the like chest first into the barricade, but I don't know. Like I, ta I talked about this on the hundredth episode of the hardest part of the ring, where big guys like a Snitsky at the time. And he wasn't the only one, but he's the only name you would you would know. So that's why I'm kind of pick on her. They were encouraged to just not let us take our own bumps or even move with our own momentum. And to me, it looked... And again, I, I always hate it when internet fans or whatever analyze this stuff. And, I, and I'm being hypocrite by doing it now, too. Because, you know, I, I, I believe you don't really know what was stiff, what wasn't. You know, unless you're one of the two guys in the ring. Or girl, or a guy, or women. Oh, fucking me. Oh, Jesus. Unless you're in the ring, I think you really don't know. Maybe the referee... To me, my opinion, from my eyeballs, it looked like Omos rammed uh, Orton into that barricade, not under Orton's own momentum. Uh, like, he was not letting Orton run into the thing. It was, it's really, I mean, I mean, it's, I, I don't think there's a big secret here. It's supposed to be more of a guiding thing, and you just want to, you know, flex and put your motion into it, and still move that person a little, but not so much that they're not in control. To me, it looked like Omos really wasn't letting Orton be in control of that. And, because that's a, that's a, Orton doesn't usually take that bump. That's, that's the thing. Or, you don't see Orton run chest first into the barricade every now and then. Like, you'd, you'd expect him to kind of, you know, turn and take it like he, they do the steps, except not quite as low. 
Like, he would just take it to the back or take it in the shoulder or whatever to help. It was just a really odd, like, why would he do it that way? And, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I didn't like it. I thought there was, I mean, I like it when something, sometimes ugly is good. You don't want the perfect buck. You don't want the exact perfect physical response. And you don't want the perfect getting hit with the, the, the legs are kicking out and you're slamming your arms to the mat and, and taking that perfect bump. Especially with like those road kicks type of moves you want to have. Sometimes you need a crumble. The crumble actually makes it look better than the perfect bump. The perfect bump sometimes can work against you and make things look less real. Uh, I don't know. There was just something. Something was off. And I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. But we go straight to... Uh, Oda Match gets um, one billion stars. Uh, Elias set his guitar on fire and put a tombstone next to his guitar. Said 2017 to 2021, so Elias is four years old. And then... Guys, I skipped the main event segment to the very, very end. Goldberg showed up. He started talking. I didn't want to listen to Goldberg. Uh, I skipped to the last minute and a half. Uh, he was where Lashley. Now I'm sure. I'm sure MVP cut a cool promo and all that. Uh, thanks to closed captioning, I just caught this. I left it on the whole time because it was goofy, and you'll see that in the picture that I show um, for the YouTube version of this. Anyway, Goldberg says the word bullshit. I don't even know what the beginning of the sentence was. I just caught that's bullshit. So here's the thing. I'm sure he thinks he's a badass and he got over for being a super uber badass and yada, 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 and cuts that douchey promo with a douchey look on his face. He's just the most punchable piece of crap, and I couldn't sit through a Goldberg promo. So, so uh, of course, when everyone else is fed Mickey Mouse things and told to talk like idiots, and he's allowed to say bullshit, yeah. He's going to look like a, an uber badass compared to everyone. Everyone else is going to look like a dork. It's like, do we want guys getting over? How about everyone can say bullshit or nobody can say bullshit? And I understand if you have a limited number of bullshits, I'm sure with the network they do, you're obviously going to give the top people. You're not going to give the 24-7 championship your, your, your one of your two or three bullshits that you're allowed to say for the year, whatever the hell it is. Um, so, yeah, but... It's not even a full. It's not a full time. It's a part time top guy. The Rock would get away with this all the time. In the in, when he was doing his two or three year long back and forth with Cena thing, whatever that was, he'd be allowed to say that shit. And then okay, well now everybody else looks like a wiener because they have to use words like wiener on <laughs> uh, uh, Monday Night Raw. So I, I think it's a little bit unfair, and it's another. Let's feed Goldberg's delusion and ego, and I can't wait till he goes away. I'm hoping, I'm assuming Lashley beats him, but I just I want it to be swift with with almost no offense for Goldberg. Was, if I had my druthers, but I, I think it'll just be a, I think it'll it'll clearly be a three or four minute back and forth, trading spear type of yada yada, and then Lashley will just beat him. I hope Lashley beats him with a Nelson, full Nelson more than a. I would like. I'd rather see the submission. Well, they won't do a submission. They'll let him pass out. But that would be great to see Goldberg tap and just be done with it. Look, but why do I have a funny feeling? We're never really getting rid of the guy. We're gonna have a 55 year old guy squash our top young athletes. And I know Lashley's 45, but he looks 33. So whatever. Uh, I don't know. Goldberg looks like. He's an asshole hosting a barbecue. That's all he looks like. He's really way too happy to be at the grill and is flipping burgers and yelling at his wife to bring more Bud Lights for his friend. And then he goes off about politics after three of them. That's what I think of Goldberg. Okay. So that was the go. Apparently SummerSlam is Saturday. Who the fuck knew this? I didn't know this until today. I kept doing the math in my head and I looked it up. So doing a Saturday pay-per-view. I guess pay-per-view buy rates don't mean anything anymore. Because they're just going to go, hey. So the Monday Raw, next Monday night, I will be at. I can't wait. Uh, that will be very exciting. 
uh, so it'll be different. The next Raw review, I'll probably have some pictures and maybe some some video or whatever from the uh, from the program. I will. I'm not going to sit there and take notes and write down everything that happens in order. I will recall everything as very well as I can. Um, but I'll obviously see the matches that are not on Hulu, and I want. I, want, I like getting to these things early. A because of parking and chaos and everything else, and B because I like seeing. I like the weight. I like the build and the hype to these type of shows. So I know they have those main event. It'll be like two matches, I guess, beforehand. So I like those. It's like getting to the movies and seeing the previews. I, I just enjoy it. And just being being in, a, in an arena, which I haven't been, been in one in a while, and waiting for a wrestling event to start is pretty goddamn cool. And I really enjoyed it at Barclays in Brooklyn, even more so at Madison Square Garden, even though they were just really house shows we went to. Um, I went to with my buddy Brian Yang, who's going to be in town coincidentally at the same time as Monday Night Raw. So, uh, yeah, we would wait, we would get to the garden early and just let people pile in and listen to everyone go woo in, the, in honor of Ric Flair. And this is 2015 16, so like they were doing the New Day claps, and a year or so later, it was all the Nakamura singing. Like, those just listen to those weird little things build and uh. And enjoy it as it builds up. So I kind of dig that stuff. Uh, to me, that's the that's the show. And then the show just happens. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's my favorite part is that first. I'm here a little too early and uh, letting it build and getting to the point where finally there's that big countdown and it means something. You're not just yeah. Like I couldn't walk into a movie five minutes late with my stupid snacks and go, "What do I do? Where do I sit? What the fuck do I know?" This is an event. It's a happening. Any business off the top? No. What is going on with me? Um, I splurged and got Castle Grayskull, as a few of you guys know. The September 18th delivery, delivery got moved up to this Friday, which suddenly just now got moved up to Wednesday night in my time, which would be Thursday uh, morning in, uh, I think, my Bob Squad's uh, time. So that should be interesting. I did see a generous uh, a gift has already been uh, been acquired by uh, Boba Hicks for an addition to the Gray Skull, which I, I am most grateful, uh, Boba Hicks. Mark, I cannot express that enough. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to wing it and just get, because Tila's really cheap, just to complete it. I'm going to get Tila online right now without any guilt. Why? Uh-oh, wait. Hold on. That's the phone. That was a spam call that I interrupted a podcast for. I just interrupted the podcast for a spam call. I didn't answer it, but the number was 1-800, so who would call me? Why am I just going to splurge without any guilt? Even though I did pass up on a Hiss Tank 3 at Walmart earlier this afternoon, I just think I already have two Hiss Tanks and Hiss 3, while the, the tracks, the rusted, dirty tracks look really cool. It's just kind of a repaint, and I'm not against it for the future, maybe, but at the moment it wasn't too much. I'm trailing off. Pardon me, I belched out my tacos. Um, why no guilt? Because God damn it all to hell, Bob Squad. Bobby got the job. Got the goddamn job. Hot damn, son of a biscuit. Jokers are cracking wise. Weisenheimers are on the up and up. Hooligans are on the straight and narrow. Dames are flipping their lids. It's the bottom of the ninth. The bases are loaded. Two strikes, two outs. as a scorch out there. 23 skidoo. ba da ba ba They're throwing babies in the air. Uh, sailors are kissing random women when uh, when that was allowed. I, Bob got the job. They said they're sending me an offer letter tomorrow. Uh, they offered verbally. I accepted verbally. They said tomorrow morning we'll send you a bunch of crap. Uh, you've got the job. Now, what does this mean? What does this mean? Well, first of all, will I be a little bit less available uh, for all the random back and forth uh, chats and videos, and will it be harder to schedule beach towns and hardest parts of the rings? Yeah, it will. But also, we're only talking about a forty-hour work week here. <laughs> I shouldn't have been this available the whole time. Yeah, you understand. So, no, I'm going to keep doing everything. If it ends up being a little later than I hope, I will hope that doesn't happen. It will be hard to do, but I will do the very best I can. Um, Beach Town, well, maybe number-wise, uh, is the is the the least of um, the least successful of the projects to date. 
still it's it's always going to be uh it's always going to be priority there it's a project i got with jesse and i do have some goals for it believe it or not um so how about that so bobby's going to start working in a little bit so that means i'm gonna not really drive any uber eats i can maybe we'll do like an hour or two over the weekend just for the hell of it see if i can get a little extra cash but um now that i know the money's coming it's like ah whatever we'll be fine I have insurance, so hopefully I can just hold out. My hernia is under control, so if I can keep it under control for 90 more days, I'll be fine. I do have insurance in case anything goes really bad. I have that Medi-Cal crap, but it's... Uh, I mean, I have a backup, but I'd rather not use it because I think it kills you on taxes later or whatever. So, I'm not celebrating at all. <laughs> I tell you, not yet. <laughs> Because it's not real yet. I don't think anything's real. Not until they send me some work and I sign it. But they said, we liked you. We're going to we offer it to you. Do you accept? I said, yes. Send it over. And they said, tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock-ish, my time. I should have some papers. And those will take a long time to fill out. So I went to a job interview this morning for no reason. Um, the lady was wacky. She was very nice. A lot of sexual tension between her and I. Most of it coming from me. But be that as it may. And the, the office had a dog, but nevertheless, it was really low paying and no insurance. And it was, they were my backup and I could, I had a feeling I was theirs. So who knew? <laughs> How about that, Bob Squats? I'll be buying more toys. It's really, <laughs> it's really what it is. Uh, yeah, it was, it was like, basically I just justified Skull. So, so I think Skull is my, that was my preemptive uh, celebration present to myself for uh i can't even call i don't know if it's hard work a lot of time and work does go into applying to jobs and then going on these interviews i do not know how many job interviews i've had this year it's well into the double digits and then and then some i couldn't tell you the answer i hate them all uh i had a sperm bank guy ask me what's my passion and today i had a holistic uh healing and physical therapy lady Ask me what three people, living, dead, real, or fictional, I would have dinner with. God damn it. And I and I said Randy Savage for one of them. And she looked at me crazy, so I switched it to The Rock, because that's more universal. And Roddy Dangerfield and Matt McConaughey. I know that's already three, but then I also threw in Joan Rivers there, because I didn't have a woman in there. And I'm like, oh, she's going to fucking think I'm an asshole. So, um, yeah. I don't need, I'm not going to have dinner with any of those people. Only one of them's alive. I don't know Matthew McConaughey. Oh, well, I got my own goddamn dinner. How about that? All right, you wild animals, you rabid dogs. I kept you long enough. Thank you for joining me in the hardest part of the ring. NXT will uh, happen pretty soon because I don't have to go to a sh Oh, tomorrow I'm going to Redondo Beach. Oh, goddamn. I'm going to Redondo Beach to visit uh, Luigi the Pitbull. So I have to get the, I have to sign the letter and do all that before. Okay. So I thank you. I thank you very much. Uh, I did forget one thing, though. Sometimes you reach a... Uh, uh, fucking... God damn, I messed it up. What was the other verse? Sometimes you're distracting the referee. And the baby face has your wrestler pinned. Then you get punched to the ring apron. And you realize all the trouble you're in when it's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Ba-da-ba-da. Ba-da-ba-da. -ba